Hi everyone, this is Rosie, and today we're going to be sewing version 2 of the City Messenger bag. So, let's get started. Let's take a quick look at the bag. We will be sewing version 2 in this video, and version 2 is made with 100% cotton quilting fabric and vinyl. The written instructions for each version of the bag are the same. The only difference is that you will be using different fabrics in each version. And if you would like to sew along with me, I will put a link to the pattern in the description below the video. Now the bag measures approximately 9 inches wide by 11 inches high by 3 inches deep. And it does have an adjustable strap. There is a flap with a snap closure. And underneath the flap you're going to find a slip pocket and a zippered pocket. The slip pocket measures just shy of 7 inches deep and the zipper pocket is slightly more than 8 inches deep. And there's plenty of room in the slip pocket for my iPhone 13. Now inside the main compartment of the bag, you're going to find that it's completed with binding. There is also a slip pocket inside that can hold some items. And there's a little section to hold a pen. Now the bag will hold a regular size iPad with the case. And then I also will put in my art journal and a small wallet. On the back of the bag there's another zippered pocket and it measures approximately 9 inches deep. And this pocket is actually large enough to hold an iPad mini. So let's go ahead and start putting the bag together. All the information that you need regarding your materials, your yardages, notions, hardware, as well as cutting out your pattern pieces will be found in your PDF file. I want to take a quick minute to go over the materials I will be using in the bag today. These are my vinyl pieces which will be used for my flap and my gusset. These pieces here will be for the exterior of the bag. They are 100% cotton quilting fabric and each piece has been interfaced with the Pellon SF-101 with the exception of my zipper tab, which I have right here. You do not want to interface your zipper tab. Now, I like to pre-fuse the Pellon SF-101 to my cotton fabrics before I cut out my pieces. That saves a lot of time on cutting out your pieces. If you prefer to cut out the Pellon SF-101 individually, you can do that. And I do have instructions inside the PDF pattern on how to pre-fuse the fabric before cutting. These pieces right here will be used for my lining. They are also 100% cotton quilting fabrics and they have all been interfaced with the Pellon SF-101 which again I pre-fuse to the fabrics before cutting. And these fabrics right here will be used for my binding and my interior pocket. Now the interior pocket was pre-fused with the Pellon SF-101, but you do not want to interface your binding pieces. And lastly, I have my foam pieces here. I did run a zigzag stitch around the edge of each piece. That helps to compress the edges to reduce bulk and it also gives a nice taper to the edge of the foam. If you do not have access to a zigzag stitch, you can simply run two straight lines of stitching along the edges of the foam and that will accomplish the same thing. In this step, we're going to prepare the bias binding. Take two of your binding strips and lay them end to end the way that you see here. And we want to cut the ends off at a 45 degree angle and those angles need to be going in the same direction. I'm going to use my ruler to make the cuts. I'll use the 45 degree angle on my ruler and I'm going to lay it along the straight edge of the bias binding. And 
and I want the edge of my ruler here to be right at the top edge of the binding strip. And once I have it lined up, I'll go ahead and make the cut. Then I'll take my ruler and move it to the other side of the strip. And again, I'm going to line up that 45 degree angle along the bottom edge of the strip. And this time, I want my ruler to be meeting the bottom edge of the strip right here. And then I will cut. And now I have those angles going in the same direction. Next, take your strips and you're going to place them right sides together. And put in a few clips. Then you're going to sew straight across the seam here with a one quarter inch seam and I'll use a stitch length of 2.0 and I am going to sew that off camera. After sewing the seam, go ahead and cut off the dog ears. And then you're going to take your binding strip and you're going to fold it in half so that the long raw edges are together and you'll fold it in half and press. You want to press the entire length of the binding in half. After folding and pressing the binding, you need to trim it to a length of 40 inches. You want to open up both ends and you're going to place those ends right sides together, put in a couple of clips and you're going to sew straight across with a one quarter inch seam and a stitch length of 2.0. Again, I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera. Before sewing, you want to make sure that your strip is not twisted. Press the seam open and then refold your binding. And then you'll want to go ahead and prepare your remaining two strips of binding in exactly the same way. In this step, we're going to prepare our zippers. Now I have the three zippers right here that I'm going to need for the project. The longer one will be used for the gusset. This next one here will be used for the back zipper pocket. And this one here will be used for the front zipper pocket. And you will find the measurements for these zippers in the pattern description. Now the one for the gusset is going to have two zipper pulls so that when they close, these zipper pulls will meet head to head. And I'm calling the side of the zipper pull that has two openings the head. So when you install these poles, you'll want to install one from this end over here, and the other one will get installed on this end over here, so that when they're zipped close, they will meet head to head. And for the remaining two zipper poles, you'll just install them from one end. For the zipper that needs the two zipper poles, you'll want to take your zipper and just separate it just a little bit there. And then you're going to take the end that has the two openings. You'll slip one end into the zipper pull at a 45 degree angle. And you're not going in too far with it. And then you're going to slip the opposite end in also at a 45 degree angle. And you want the two ends of the zipper tape to be about even with each other. just like this. And then once it looks even, you push that zipper head or the zipper pull on to the zipper tape and then just pull. Then for the other end, again you want to open it up slightly and put the zipper pull in onto the tape at a 45 degree angle just like you did before. Do the same thing with the other side. Once the tape looks like it's even, then you'll push the zipper head or the zipper pull on and pull it closed. And now you should have the two zipper pulls meeting head to head. 
And then you can go ahead and install your other two zipper pulls. After the zipper pulls are installed, I like to stitch the end of each zipper just to make sure that I don't accidentally slide the zipper pull off. And you can do that with some machine stitching or with some hand stitching. Now we want to work with the zipper that's going to go in the back of the bag. So you'll need that zipper plus your zipper tab. And we want to place the zipper tab on the end of the zipper tape. But you want to make sure that the zipper pull is going in the right direction. So if I go this way, this is opening my zipper. And if I pull the pull this way, it's closing my zipper. And I want my zipper tab to go on the opposite end of the zipper pull when the zipper is closed. So you'll take your zipper tab and place it right side onto the zipper. And then you can hold it on there with a little clip. I'm going to sew the tab onto the zipper with a 3 8 inch seam and a stitch length of 3.0. I am going to back stitch at both ends and I am going to do that off camera. After sewing on the tab, you want to pull the tab away from the zipper. Then you'll flip everything over to the wrong side of the zipper and you want to take the tab, the top of the tab here, you want to fold it down so that it meets the end of the zipper. And then after you fold it down, you're going to fold it one more time so that the folded edge is covering your line of stitching. Then you can hold everything together with a clip and then you'll just top stitch about an eighth of an inch away from the edge of that zipper tab. We're only going to install a zipper tab on this end of the zipper and we're going to finish the top a little bit differently. The first thing that you want to do is measure from your zipper tab up the zipper to the finished length of the zipper that goes into the back of the bag. And again, the measurement is in the file. Then you're going to pull down your zipper pull and we want to separate the teeth here. Now remember, I had stitched this before so that I didn't accidentally pull off my zipper pull. And now what you want to do is fold back on the line that you marked, just like this. And then you're going to take that fold and you're going to bring it up to the zipper teeth. Just like this. And then I'm going to hold it in place with a pin. And you want to tack this in place either with some hand stitching or machine stitching. It's up to you. And then you'll do the same thing on the other side. And I prefer to tack mine in place on the sewing machine, so I'm going to go and do that off camera. I just finished tacking the zipper in place by simply sewing right on the edge of the zipper tape right here. And now you can close your pull and it won't come off. And the next thing that you want to do is just trim off the ends of the zipper. In this step, we're going to prepare our rectangle ring connectors. From your seatbelt webbing, cut out two pieces that are three inches long. That's going to leave 54 inches for your strap. If you need to have a longer strap, then you'll have to make an adjustment to the amount of seatbelt webbing that you purchase. You will also need your two rectangle rings, and later on when we put together the strap, you'll need your slider. I did go ahead and singe the ends of each piece to prevent fraying. Now you're simply going to take one of the pieces for the rectangle ring connector, slip on your rectangle ring, you can hold it together with a clip, and then you're going to sew straight across one eighth of an inch away from the edge. And I am going to do that off camera, I'll use a stitch length of 3.0 and I will back stitch at both ends. And you do want to prepare both connectors the same way. In this step, we're going to construct the front of the bag. You'll need piece A, which is your front exterior, and you'll need piece B, which is your front exterior pocket facing. You want to take your facing, and we're going to place it right sides together with the front. Make sure that you line up 
all of the edges and clip the pieces together. Make sure that all of those edges are nice and even. And then we're going to sew all along this opening right here with a 3 8 inch seam. I'm sewing on a Juki TL2010Q. I'll be using a stitch length of 2.5 and the seam allowance is 3 8 of an inch. And I have marked out the seam allowance so that you can see a little bit better where I'm sewing. I'm using Gudeman Mara 70 thread and you do want to back stitch at both ends. When you get to the bottom of that seam right there you want to pivot and then you're going to start sewing across. Try and maintain your 3 8 inch seam allowance. And then you'll pivot one more time. And sew back up to the top and back stitch. We want to take some bulk out of the corners. So I'm just going to clip a little V shape in on each one of these corners. You want to clip right up to the stitching, but make sure that you don't clip through your stitching. You'll do the same thing on the other side. Then you'll go ahead and press your seams open. After pressing those seams open, you're going to take your facing and flip it to the opposite side of piece A so that the wrong side of piece B and piece A are facing each other. You want to roll your seams out. I like to have the seam laying right on top here. Then you'll bring this back over to the iron and you want to press everything very nicely. Make sure that you have nice sharp corners here. And then after you press you want to top stitch one eighth of an inch away from the opening. I'm going to top stitch one eighth of an inch away from the edge all around the opening with a stitch length of 3.0 and the foot that I'm using right here is the hinged zipper foot from Juki. You do want to back stitch at both ends. I'm going to pivot and I'll pivot one more time and sew back up to the top. and back stitch. Now we're going to create our front zipper pocket. So you need both piece D's, which is the front zipper pocket front panels, and you also need the zipper that you prepared for that zippered pocket. You'll start with one of the piece D's, and we're going to take the zipper and place the right side of the zipper against the right side of piece D and clip it in place. After it's clipped into place, we're going to sew the zipper on with a 1 8 inch seam. Now 
I'm going to sew the zipper to piece D one eighth of an inch away from the edge with a stitch length of 3.0 and I am going to back stitch at both ends. Move my zipper pull out of the way for just a minute here. You want the edge of that zipper tape to stay even with the top of piece D. And back stitch. Take your second piece D and we're going to place the two pieces right sides together with the zipper sandwiched in between. And you're going to clip them along the top edge here. And when we're done clipping, we're going to sew the two pieces together with a one quarter inch seam. Now if you prefer to sew both pieces together with the zipper sandwiched in between at the same time, you certainly can do that. This is how I prefer to do it. I'm sewing the two piece D's together with the zipper sandwiched in between and I will be sewing with a stitch length of 3.0 and a 1 quarter of an inch seam allowance. And you do want a back stitch. Just going to move that zipper pull out of the way for a minute. Now we're going to flip this and place the wrong sides of both piece D's together. And then you want to press your zipper seam really well on both sides. I finished pressing that zipper seam and now I want to put a few clips around the three sides here. So around these three sides. And that's because I just want to make sure that all of these edges here are staying even. And then we're going over to the machine and we're going to top stitch one eighth of an inch away from the edge of that zipper seam. I'm top stitching one eighth of an inch away from the zipper seam with a stitch length of 3.0 and I will back stitch at both ends. take piece C, which is your front zipper pocket rear panel, place it down on your work surface and you want to take the unit that you completed with the zipper and place it right on top of piece C with the right side of the fabric facing up. And we want to clip the two pieces together. Your top edges, your side edges, and your bottom edges should all be even with each other. So I'll start by clipping across the top of the zipper. And then I'll go ahead and clip down the sides. Again, make sure everything looks nice and even. And when we're done clipping this, we're going to baste all of these sections together one eighth of an inch away from the edge. I'm ready to baste the unit together. I'll use a stitch length of 3.5 and I'm basting one eighth of an inch away from the edge. 
There's no real need to backstitch at this point. I just gave a little back stitch there. We're ready to sew the zippered pocket unit into the front of the bag. So you'll take your front exterior and flip it over so that the facing is right side up on your work surface. Then you'll take your zippered pocket and you want to turn it so that the wrong side of the pocket unit is facing up. And then we're going to clip these three sides of the zippered pocket to the three sides of the facing. So you'll lay them together. You want to make sure that your zipper is open about halfway for this step. So place them together. And I like to start by making sure that the top edge of the pocket is even with the top edge of the facing. So first Clip those edges together. Your side edges and your bottom edges also need to be even with each other. So first we'll clip those top edges. And then you can go ahead and clip along the sides and along the bottom. It's really important that the edge of the pocket unit is even with the edges of the facing, especially along the top. So just go ahead and clip all the way around those three edges. And I'll clip down this side. Now, all the cutting and sewing and everything, it all counts for how things fit together. So if things look like they're a little bit off, it's not the worst thing in the world because you have a 3 8 inch seam allowance to work with. And now we'll clip along the bottom. After clipping all of the layers together, this is what it should look like from the back. This is what it should look like from the front. Make sure that your zipper is open about halfway. And we're going to flip the front exterior out of the way and sew 3 eighths of an inch away from the edge on all three sides. I'm sewing with a stitch length of 3.0 and my seam allowance is 3 eighths of an inch and I am going to back stitch.
and backstitch at the end. The zipper pocket's now sewn into place. What I like to do next is take the front exterior and pull it aside just like this. And you're going to see that there's a little seam right here. What I like to do is stitch straight through all of the layers very close to that seam. You just want to make sure that you don't catch the actual fabric in the seam. You don't want to catch this piece of fabric into the seam here. So stitch close and what that's going to do, it's going to act like a zipper stop. If you don't do it, your zipper pull can go all the way in to, towards the side of the bag. But with the stitching there, it acts like a zipper stop and your zipper pull won't go any farther than that. Then you can also do the same exact thing on this side. Pull aside the front exterior and then just stitch through all of the layers close to the seam. Now I'll just go ahead and stitch down those seams and I'll use a stitch length of 3.0 and I'm going to back stitch. And then you can go ahead and sew down on the other side. We're ready to sew on the top section of the front, so you'll need piece E, which is the upper front exterior. You're going to take piece E and place it right sides together with the front, and you'll line the top edge of piece E up with the top edge of the front. You also want to make sure that your side edges are even. You'll clip all along the length, and then after clipping, we're going to sew the two sections together with a one quarter inch seam. I'm sewing exterior piece E to the front of the bag with a stitch length of 3.0 and a seam allowance of one quarter of an inch. And I will back stitch at both ends. If you need to move your zipper pull out of the way, go ahead and do that. And you just want to make sure that your edges are even as you sew along. Now press the seam up and then top stitch one eighth of an inch away from the seam line. Now I'm going to top stitch one eighth of an inch away from that seam line with a stitch length of 3.0 and I will back stitch at both ends. In this step, we're going to prepare and attach the front lining to the front of the bag. So you'll need pattern piece H, which is your front and back lining pieces, and you also need piece K, which is your front and back interfacing. For now, you just need one of each of these pieces. The first thing that I like to do is add a few pieces of double-sided stick tape to the back of your lining piece. Now you can also use an adhesive spray to do this if you want. It's just to temporarily hold the interfacing, the foam interfacing in place for sewing. Then you'll pull off the release paper to reveal the opposite side of the sticky tape. And then take your foam piece of interfacing here and lay it down on top of the back of the lining. You want to make sure that you have an equal distance all the way around the edges here. Next, take the front of your bag and you want to place it on top of the lining. Both pieces should be the same size. You want to line up all of your edges and you're going to clip the front of the bag and the lining together. If the front 
is just slightly smaller than your lining, that's okay. You have enough of a seam allowance if it's a little bit smaller, but you do not want to trim down your lining. And then just continue to clip all the way around. always important to be careful with your cutting and your seams and we never do things perfectly but you should be close enough. After you have the front of the bag and the lining clipped together we're going to baste 1 8 of an inch around the perimeter of the front. Now I'll baste around the perimeter of the front 1 8 of an inch away from the edge and with a stitch length of 3.5 and you don't need to back stitch. In this step, we will be constructing the back of the bag. You'll need piece I, which is your back exterior zipper pocket, one of your lining pieces, which is marked J, and that's your back zipper pocket lining, and you'll also need the zipper that you prepared for the back zipper pocket. We're going to start by marking one inch down from the straight edge of the back pocket. And I am using a friction pen to make my mark. Keep in mind that while these marks will disappear with heat, they can come back with cold. So be very careful where you use them. I only use them in the videos for demonstration purposes. So here I have my line marked one inch down from the top. Then you'll take this over to the iron. You want to fold back on that line and give it a good pressing. After pressing the fold, we want to open it up again and then you want to measure in 5 eighths of an inch from each side edge and this will be for our zipper placement. So again I'll just go ahead and make my marks. And now your zipper should fit right in between those marks that we just drew. I do want my zipper pull to open on the left side. So you're going to take the zipper and place it face down. So the right side of the zipper is going to be facing the right side of the fabric. And then you can clip all along this length here. After we have the zipper clipped into place, we're going to sew it one eighth of an inch away from the edge. I'm sewing the zipper in place with a seam allowance of one eighth of an inch and a stitch length of 3.0. You do want to back stitch. And I did start with my zipper pull slightly open, but I'm going to close it now. Now take your piece J lining. We want to place it right sides together with piece I and we're going to clip all along this top edge. So we'll be clipping piece J to piece I with the zipper sandwiched in between. You want to line up that top edge 
and you also want to make sure that everything is even on the sides. You want your side edges to be even. Open up the zipper slightly. After we clip this in place, we're going to sew straight across with a one quarter inch seam allowance. And again, if you prefer to sew everything together in one step, you certainly can do that. I'm sewing with a 1 quarter inch seam allowance and a stitch length of 3.0. You do want to back stitch at both ends. Right now my zipper is slightly open. My zipper pull is right here. And I'm going to go ahead and close that zipper up. Now we can flip this so that the wrong side of the lining is facing the wrong side of the exterior. And when you do this, the bottom edges of your lining should be meeting the bottom edge of your exterior. And then you'll want to go ahead and press right along the seam line. After pressing, we're going to top stitch 1 eighth of an inch away from this seam and we're going to do it from the lining side. I'm top stitching one eighth of an inch away from the seam with a stitch length of 3.0 and I'm going to back stitch on both ends. Take your second lining piece J and you want to mark it in 5 eighths of an inch from the edge on each side just like we did before for our zipper placement. Then you're going to take the lining piece and you want to place the right side of the lining onto the wrong side of the zipper. So I'm just going to flip it over this way so I can see my marks here. And I'm going to clip it all along the edge. So the top edge or the edge of the zipper should be even with the top edge of that lining piece. You also just want to double check make sure that all of your side edges are even. And then after we finish clipping this, we're going to sew the zipper in place with a 1 8 inch seam. I'm sewing the wrong side of the zipper onto the right side of the lining, 1 8 of an inch away from the edge of the zipper with a stitch length of 3.0. And you do want to back stitch. Next we're going to sew piece F, which is the upper back exterior, to the right side of the zipper. So you'll take piece F and you'll start clipping it to the right side of the zipper. You want to make sure that your side edges are even and you want to make sure that the straight edge here is even with the top of the zipper pocket. And you'll clip it in place. After it's all clipped into place, we're going to sew everything together with a one quarter inch seam.
I'm ready to sew piece F in place and I will be stitching with a stitch length of 3.0 and the seam allowance is one quarter of an inch and I'm back stitching at both ends. to move my zipper pull out of the way. and back stitch. After sewing the seam, open up your zipper. And now we're going to place this down on the work surface just like this. So on this side you have piece F plus the lining and on the other side you have the lining right here and the exterior. You're going to top stitch right along that seam one eighth of an inch away from the edge. And when you do, you're only going to be sewing through the lining and through this seam allowance right here. So you're not sewing through piece F at all. You're only sewing through the seam allowance of piece F. And we are going to do the top stitching from the lining side. I'm top stitching an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the seam with a stitch length of 3.0 and remember that you're only top stitching through the lining and the seam allowance underneath the lining. And you do want to back stitch at both ends. And here I want to show you that this line right here is the top stitching that we just sewed and it's only catching in the seam allowance. The last thing that we want to do for the back is baste the three layers together here. So you have your exterior layer and the two layers of your lining. You want to match up all of those edges and clip them together. Make sure that they're nice and even with each other. I like to clip along the bottom first. Then I'll clip up the side. After we finish clipping, we want to base these layers together. After you have those three layers clipped together, you just want to make sure that all of your edges are even on both sides. You also want to make sure that the pocket here is an equal distance from the top, all the way across the width of the bag. Now you're going to base one eighth of an inch away from the edge along these three sides. You'll start at the top of the pocket here and you want to backstitch at both ends. So you'll backstitch on this side and you'll backstitch on this side. And I am going to do that off camera. In this step, we will be preparing the back lining with the interior pocket. So you'll need your second piece H and you'll also need the piece that you cut out for your interior pocket. First thing that you want to do is fold the pocket in half with the right sides together. 
and you'll just put in a few clips to hold it in place. After you have this clip together, we will sew one quarter of an inch down each side. Do not sew across the bottom. And I am going to sew those two side seams off camera with a stitch length of 3.0. Next, trim a little triangle at the top of each seam and that's right near the folded edge. Just be careful not to clip through your stitching and this will help to reduce some bulk. Then you'll want to go ahead and press those seams open and turn the piece right side out. If you need to, you can get in there with a point turner to help push out those corners. Just be careful not to poke through your line of stitching. And then, after you have everything turned right side out, give it another good pressing. Now take your lining piece H and mark one and one quarter inches up from the bottom. You also want to find the center of that line. So you can simply fold this in half and just place a mark at the center. Next, take your interior pocket and you want to find the center of the interior pocket as well. And I'm just going to mark my center with a pin. Now take your lining and your pocket and you want to place the raw edge of the pocket right up against this line and you want to match the center of the pocket with the center mark on your lining. So line it all up and then hold it in place with a couple of pins. After pinning it in place, we're going to sew one quarter of an inch away from the raw edge of the pocket. I'm sewing with a stitch length of 3.0 and I am going to sew a one quarter inch seam. Now since I cannot use my throat plate as a guide, I did go ahead and mark in my stitching line with a chalk wheel. And I will back stitch at both ends. Now trim out the corners of the pocket and then I also like to trim the seam allowance down to one eighth of an inch. After trimming the seam, fold the pocket up and press it in place. Then we're going to sew the pocket and we'll start on one side. You want to back stitch really well at the top. You're going to stitch one eighth of an inch away from the edge. Then you're going to come down to the bottom here and you want to stop about a quarter of an inch from the bottom. Then you'll stitch straight across the bottom one quarter of an inch away from the edge here. And then when you get to this side you'll stop about an eighth of an inch away from this side here. You'll pivot and sew up to the top and then you'll back stitch really well again. In addition to that, I like to make a little section for holding a pen. So I'm going to measure in one and a half inches from the side of the pocket and mark a line with my chalk wheel. Then I'll sew down on this line and again you want to back stitch really well at both ends. And before I go over to the sewing machine to sew this, I will put a few pins in place just to hold everything together. I'm going to sew the pocket in place with a stitch length of 3.0. You want to back stitch really well 
at the top of the pocket. Right now I'm just sewing one eighth of an inch down the first side. And I'm going to stop one quarter of an inch before the bottom of the pocket and pivot. And I did go ahead and mark a line one quarter of an inch up from the bottom so that you could see where I'm sewing. Now I'll sew across the bottom. And I'm going to stop one eighth of an inch before the next side here. And then I'll pivot again and sew up the second side. When I get to the top, I'm going to back stitch really well again. And after sewing the three sides, I'll go over here to the division for my pen pocket. And again, I'm going to back stitch very well at both ends. And once again at the top, I'll back stitch a few times. So now we want to sew the lining to the back of the bag. So you'll need your lining with your interior pocket, and you'll need piece K, which is your foam interfacing, and of course you'll need the back of the bag. So once again, I want to take my piece of foam, and I'm going to put a few strips of double-sided sticky tape on the back of the foam. And you're preparing this exactly the way you did for the front. Then you'll remove your release paper and you'll take your lining, your back lining, and center the interfacing onto the back lining. Next, you're going to take the back of your bag and you're going to place it on top of the lining. You'll match up all of the edges and clip everything together, just like you did for the front. And just like the front, the back of the bag should be the same size as your lining. And you do not want to trim your lining down to fit the back of the bag. So you could go ahead and clip all the sections together just as you did for the front. I have the back of the bag all clipped in place with the lining. Once again, make sure that all those edges look even. And then you can go ahead and baste the sections together one eighth of an inch away from the edge with a stitch length of 3.5. You're going to do this exactly the way you did for the front, so I am going to do that off camera. In this step, we'll be sewing the upper gusset. You'll need your two vinyl pieces for the upper gusset the two lining pieces for the upper gusset and the interfacing pieces. You will also need the zipper that you prepared for the gusset. And we're going to start by clipping the zipper to one of the final gusset pieces. And you're just simply going to take the zipper and place it right sides together with the gusset. After you have it all clipped together, we're going to sew the zipper in place one eighth of an inch away from the edge. I'm sewing the zipper to the vinyl one eighth of an inch away from the edge and with a stitch length of 3.0. I will back stitch at both ends.
Next, take one of the lining pieces for the upper gusset and one of the interfacing pieces. And once again, I'm going to run a piece of double-sided tape on the wrong side of that interfacing. So again, you're going to remove the release paper to expose the adhesive. And then you're going to lay the interfacing, the foam interfacing on top of that lining, on the wrong side of the lining. And you want to make sure that you have even space all the way around. Then you're going to take the gusset that you just sewed the zipper onto and you'll take your lining and you want to place it right sides together with the vinyl and with the uh, zipper sandwiched in between. You can go ahead and clip them together and after clipping we're going to sew one quarter of an inch away from the edge. I'm sewing the lining to the upper gusset with a stitch length of 3.0 and a seam allowance of one quarter of an inch and I did mark the one quarter inch seam line so you can see where I'm sewing. I'm going to move my zipper pulls out of the way. Now I want to finger press both the lining and the upper gusset away from the zipper. So you'll be bringing the wrong side of the vinyl and the wrong side of the lining together. Then you can go ahead and clip the vinyl and the lining together. And after you have them clipped together, we're going to baste down the side and then pivot and baste all along this length here, baste back up the side and then we're going to top stitch one eighth of an inch away from this seam. I'm setting my stitch length at 3.5 to do both my basting and my top stitching. And I will be basting and top stitching one eighth of an inch away from the edge. And I will start out by back stitching. Now I can pivot. Try and keep those edges even. Give it again. Sew up the side. And I'll stop one eighth of an inch away from the seam line there. And then I'll pivot. And now I'm going to do my top stitching. And I am going to give it a little bit of a back stitch here. I want to make sure that that zipper is pulled away from the seam line. And then I'll finish it off with a little bit of back stitching. 
Now we need to sew the other side of the gusset to the opposite side of the zipper. You're going to do it in exactly the same way that we did this side. So I'm going to do that off camera. After sewing both sides of the gusset to the zipper, the gusset should measure 3.75 inches wide. In this step, we're going to sew the lower gusset to the upper gusset. So you'll need the upper gusset that you already prepared, the vinyl for the lower gusset, the lining for the lower gusset, and the interfacing. You will also need the two rectangle rings. First, take your lining and flip it over to the wrong side and place two strips of double-sided stick tape down the center. And then you can go ahead and remove the release paper. Then you'll take the interfacing and you're going to line it up on the wrong side of the lining just the way you've done before, making sure that you have even spacing all the way around. Next, take the upper gusset and the rectangle ring connectors and place them right in the center of that gusset. And clip it in place and do the same thing on the other end. Then take this over to the sewing machine and you're going to baste the rectangle ring connectors to each side, one eighth of an inch away from the edge. I will do that off camera with a stitch length of 3.0 and I will back stitch on each end. Take your exterior lower gusset and we're going to clip the ends of the lower and upper gussets together with right sides together. So go ahead and line it up on each end. When you're done clipping them, we're going to base them together one eighth of an inch away from the edge. So you clip this side and then go ahead and clip the opposite end. Make sure that all of your edges are even on the sides and along the top. I'm basting with a stitch length of 3.0 and I'm just stitching one eighth of an inch away from the edge and I will back stitch. And then you can go ahead and base the other side in exactly the same way. Now the lining side of the lower gusset will be clipped to the lining side of the upper gusset. So once again, you're just going to match up your edges and clip them together. And when you're done clipping both ends, we're going to sew this on with a one quarter inch seam. I'm sewing with a stitch length of 3.0 and a one quarter inch seam allowance, and I will back stitch at both ends. And then go ahead and sew the other side exactly the same way. We need to flip the gusset so that the wrong sides are together. So it should look just like this now. Then we're going to clip the lining and the exterior of the lower gusset together all along the length. And you'll do this on both sides. After you have the exterior and the lining clipped together all along the lower gusset, you want to baste one eighth of an inch away from the edge all along the long edge here. Then you'll pivot and then you're going to top stitch right across that seam. Baste up the other side and then top stitch across that seam on that side. I'm doing the basting and the top stitching with a stitch length of 3.0 and I will 
both baste and top stitch one eighth of an inch away from the edges. I'm going to back stitch. You want to make sure that your layers are staying together, your lining and your exterior. When you start approaching that seam, you want to stop one eighth of an inch away from the edge of the seam. Then you're going to pivot and just top stitch straight across. And I'll do a little back stitch at the beginning and the end there. And then I'm going to pivot again and I'll start basting down the second side. When you get close to that second seam, once again you'll stop one eighth of an inch away from the seam and you can pivot and top stitch across just like you did before. Our next step is to attach the binding to the gusset. So you'll need your gusset and the two strips of binding that you've already prepared. You're going to turn the binding so that the lining side is out and then take one of your strips of binding. This is going to get clipped to the lining side of the gusset. So you'll clip it in place all the way around once you have it secured with the clips, we're going to baste it in place one eighth of an inch away from the edge. And we're going to do this to both sides. Here I have my binding clipped to both sides of the gusset and you want to make sure that you're clipping the raw edge of the binding to the edge of the gusset. I've already gone ahead and basted the binding to the opposite side of the gusset. Now I'm going to stitch the binding on this side and I will use a stitch length of 3.0 and I'm basting 1 of an inch away from the edge. And there is no need to back stitch. You just want to make sure that you're keeping the edge of your binding and the edge of the gusset as even as you possibly can.
In this step, we will be sewing the flap, so you'll need both flap pieces, the one for your exterior and the one for your lining. You're simply going to place them right sides together and clip them all the way around. After this is clipped, we're going to sew 3 eighths of an inch away from the edge, down this side, along the bottom, and up this side. You do not want to sew the top of the flap shut. I'm sewing the flap 3 eighths of an inch away from the edge with a stitch length of 3.0, and I am going to back stitch at both ends. Take your time around the curves. If you need to pivot, go ahead and pivot a little bit. Now you can go ahead and clip some V shapes into the curves to help reduce some of the bulk there. And then after we're done clipping those curves, we'll go ahead and turn the flap right side out. Before I turn the flap right side out, I want to press my seams open, but since I've used vinyl on these pieces, I don't want to put any heat on my vinyl, so I'm just going to finger press them. And I'm using a little um, point turner tool to do that. So you'll just go around the entire flap and finger press those seams. And now I can go ahead and turn the flap right side out. First, I'll just get in there with my fingers and push out all of the edges. You want to roll those edges so that your seam is laying right on the top. Then you can use a point turner to help push out those seams a little more. Just be careful not to poke through your stitching. And then I'm going to take my other tool and just burnish it down a little bit. Now I'm going to take a few clips to clip the top opening together. And I'll put a few clips around the flap as well. This will just help hold those seams together because we're going to go ahead and top stitch now. We're going to top stitch one eighth of an inch away from the edge all the way around the flap and you also want to baste one eighth of an inch away from the opening at the top of the flap. I'm going to start by basting straight across the flap here. I'll be using a stitch length of 3.5 and we're just going to do the top stitching and the basting one eighth of an inch away from the edges. I will back stitch. And when you get towards that side there, you'll stop one eighth of an inch away from the edge and pivot. Take it slow around the curves. And 
and back stitch at the end. Using the pattern piece for the flap, mark the placement for your snap, which I've already done here. Now I'm just going to poke a hole straight through to install my snap. And I like to put the male side of the snap onto the flap. I do have a video on how to install cam snaps and I'll link to that for you in the video description. Now we're going to base the flap to the front of the bag. You want to find the center of the front and the center of the flap. And we're going to match up those centers and you'll clip the flap to the front of the bag with the edge of the flap even with the top edge of the bag. And then we're going to base the flap straight across with a 1 8 inch seam. And I'm going to go and do that off camera and I'll use a stitch length of 3.5. Now we need to find the placement for the other half of the snap. So what I like to do is just lay the flap down where it naturally wants to go and then I'll press really hard on the snap. And because we have the male side of the snap on the flap, it should leave a little impression. Now you're probably not going to be able to see it on the camera, but I can see it and I'm just going to mark the center of that snap right here. Now we're going to poke a hole for the snap placement. When you do, you're only going to be poking through the exterior and the facing. So you're going to take your awl and push it through to make the hole. Just like this. And then you'll go ahead and install the pieces for the snap. And then you'll set it in place. And now your snap should close perfectly. In this step, we'll be sewing the front of the bag to the gusset. So you need your bag front and the gusset. The first thing that you want to do is find the center of the top and the bottom front. And you'll want to find the center of each side. To find the centers, you can do this a couple of ways. You could either measure and mark, or you can just simply fold the front in half. Just make sure that all the edges are even and then put a mark on the center. Then we'll do the same thing on the other side. I'm just going to fold it in half. And mark my center. We already have the top center marked because we marked the center of the flap. So now we'll just go ahead and mark the center of the bottom. And then I just like to go ahead and double check myself with a ruler. So I will measure from the center to the side and then from this center to this side. And I just want to make sure that everything is the same. And I'll do the same thing here for the sides. Now we need to find all the center points for the gusset. The first thing you'll do is take the gusset. You'll bring those side seams together just like this. So here's the sides and I'm going to put a clip to hold it together right where the sides are. 
then I'm going to stretch it out in each direction. So I'll stretch it out here to the left and where the fold is that's going to be the center of the top of the gusset. So I'm just going to mark it there and then you're going to stretch it out to the right and where the fold is that's going to be the center of the bottom of the gusset. Then you're going to do the same exact thing on the other side. You'll bring those side seams together, hold it with a clip, stretch out to the left and to the right, and make your marks. And now that we've established the center of the top of the gusset and the bottom of the gusset, we need to find the centers of the sides of the gusset. So what you're going to do now is bring the center of the bottom and the center of the top gusset together. So here's the center. And then you're going to clip it in place. And do the same thing. You're going to stretch out to the left and to the right. And where the folds are, you're going to place a mark, and that's going to be the side center. And then this will be the second side center. And then you'll do the same exact thing on the other side. You're going to bring the two center marks together for the center of the top and the center of the bottom gusset. Clip them. Stretch out to the left and to the right, and where the fold is, you'll make a mark. Now normally, if I'm just sewing and not making a video, I wouldn't be marking on the vinyl. I would just be putting a couple of pins in place. In this step, we're going to actually pin the front of the bag to the gusset. Now, it doesn't really matter which side of the gusset you pin the front to because it's the same on both sides. So this side and this side are the same. I did go ahead and put some pins in to help us line everything up. So I've marked all of the centers with those pins. And you want to take your gusset and turn it so that the lining side is out. Now you're going to take the bag, the front of the bag, and we want to line the center of the top of the gusset with the center top of the bag. So I'm going to line up those marks. That's right where the pins are. And I'll put in a couple of clips to hold it in place. Then I'll do the same thing on the bottom. I'm going to line up the center mark of the bottom of the gusset with the center mark on the bottom of the bag. And again, I'll put some clips in to hold everything in place. Now we'll match up the center sides. So the center side of the gusset with the center side of the bag. You want to make sure that all of your edges are even when you're doing this. And then we'll match up the last side here. So this is what you should have right now. Now we're ready to clip the rest of the gusset in place. You want to make sure that you keep your edges even. So the edge of the gusset with the edge of the front of the bag, they need to be even all the way around. And I like to clip from the centers to the curves. So first I'll clip that side, and now I will clip this side towards the curve. And put in as many clips as you need. There's no rule about how many clips you can put in. So now I'm going to clip from the side up to the curve. And I'll keep doing this all the way around. Keeping the edges even. 
is the most important thing about the gusset fitting in properly. Then lastly, I go ahead and I clip all the curves in place. And what you want to do is round everything around your fingers, just like this. And then you'll see that that gusset is just going to fall where it needs to be. And because we've eliminated bulk out in the seam line, it'll just fall right into place. So you just keep easing it in. If you need to make a few adjustments where you clip the sides, then just go ahead and make those adjustments. And again, I'm making sure that I'm keeping those edges even as I clip around. Now as for sewing this, we, we're going to use a stitch length of 3.0 and a seam allowance of 3 8 of an inch. If you want to baste it in place first, that's fine too. So this is what it should look like, and this is what it looks like from the gusset side. You also want to make sure that the binding is laying nice and flat, and I do like to sew from the gusset side. I know some people like to sew from, you know, the front side. I find I have better success when I sew from the gusset side, and that's what you should have right now. I'm going to be sewing with a stitch length at 3.0. The seam allowance is 3 8 of an inch. I am going to back stitch and I am sewing from the gusset side of the bag. You just want to take it slow. It helps to work with the needle in the down position and it's also helpful to use a stiletto to just help keep those seams, those, those side edges of the gusset and the front of the bag in place. And there's no rush, you just take your time, especially around the, the curves. I keep adjusting my gusset so that everything is laying flat as I sew along.
then you'll back stitch again when you get to back to the beginning. Once you're done sewing that seam, you want to go ahead and check everything really well. Make sure that everything was caught within the seam line. You want to check and make sure that you don't have any puckers anywhere. And you also want to check on the back here. Just look all the way around at your stitching line. Make sure that everything is exactly as it should be. Once you're sure, and once you're very sure that everything looks good, you want to go ahead and trim this seam line down to one quarter of an inch. Now if you remember, we basted uh, the front together one eighth of an inch away from the edge and I'm using that line there as my guide to get me down to a one quarter of an inch seam. After you trim down the seam, you want to pull the binding up towards the lining side of the front. Normally, I like to hand stitch my binding in place, but I know a lot of people don't want to do hand stitching, so I'm going to show you how you can sew your binding down on the machine. I'm going to use this product here. It's called Tear Mender. I bought it on Amazon. And I'm going to use this to help glue the binding down, and then I'm going to use Wonder Clips to hold it in place while the glue is drying. Whenever you use a glue product or any product, you always want to check the back for any warnings or cautions before you use the product. One reason why I like this uh, product so much is because it's a very liquid glue and it's not hard to squeeze out of the bottle. And it's also made for fabric and leather. So I'm just going to apply a little bead of the glue and I will warn you, I am really messy when I use glue. And then you're going to take the folded edge of that binding and bring it down over the seam line and you want the folded edge to be covering the line of stitching there. See I'm already making a mess. And then I'm just going to keep adding little bits of glue as I go around. And then I will bring the binding over to the lining side and make sure I, I cover the stitching. You want to do this all the way around. And the glue dries very fast, so once it's set, then we can go over to the machine and sew the binding in place. Now, if you just want to clip the, uh, the binding in place without gluing, that's fine too. You can do that. So I'm going to go ahead now and just finish setting the binding in place, and then we'll go ahead and sew it. I just finished setting the binding in place, and I just want to show you that it's only been a couple of minutes, and already that binding is sticking down there pretty well. I'm going to let it dry a little bit longer and then we will sew it at the machine. I've removed all of the clips and the glue is holding the binding in place so now I'm going to go ahead and sew it at the machine. I'm going to stitch the binding in place with a stitch length of 3.0 and I'll just be sewing in the ditch which means that I'm just going to be sewing right where that seam line is. And you'll try and get your needle to fall right in that little space. 
and I will back stitch. And then I'm just going to sew all the way around. And when I get back to where I started, I will just backstitch. And here's the binding all stitched into place. We're ready to sew the back of the bag into the other side of the gusset. So you want to find the center of the top and the center of the bottom, just like you did for the front, and then you want to find the center of both sides. And I've marked each center with a pin. I have the bag right here. I went ahead and marked those center marks on the gusset with pins and you want to open up your zipper all the way for this step. And then the first thing that you're going to do is match up all of your center marks. So I want to match the top center of the gusset with the top center of the back. You're going to clip everything right sides together just like you did for the front. So I'll match up those centers and then put in a few clips. And I'm going to go ahead and first match up all of my centers. And now you can go ahead and clip in the rest of the back and you're going to do this exactly the same way that you did for the front. And once again, I always like to clip down towards the curves and then I clip the curves in last. Here we are with the back clipped together to the opposite side of the gusset and now we're ready to sew it all in place. So go ahead and sew in the back exactly the way that you did for the front with a stitch length of 3.0 and a seam allowance of 3 eighths of an inch. And I'm going to do this off camera. I just finished sewing in the back and once again you want to check all of your seams really well. You want to make sure that everything was caught into your seam line on both the lining and you also want to look in onto the interior. Make sure that everything looks good around the entire back of the bag and once you're sure that everything is okay you can go ahead and trim that seam down to one quarter of an inch. Now I'm going to trim the seam down to one quarter of an inch exactly the same way that I did for the front. Now finish off the binding exactly the way that you did for the front. You're going to pull the binding up towards the lining and you're going to clip it in place. Now you can either use the method that I used for the front or you can hand stitch this in place. I have my binding sewn into place so now we can go ahead and turn the bag right side out and put on our strap. So you just want to reach into the bag and push out all of the seams. And here's where we are after turning the bag right side out. And the only thing left for us to do now 
is put on the strap. In this step, we're going to attach the shoulder strap to the bag. And it is an adjustable strap, so you need to have a strap slider. Now, a strap slider has a bar right down the center of it. On mine, the bar is movable. On some sliders, the bar is stationary. The first thing that you're going to do is take the end of the strap and you want to put it up through the bottom of the slider. And when you do this, you want the bar to be to the right of the strap. Then you're going to take the end of the strap and put it down through the top of the slider. And now the bar is in the middle. So this is what it should look like with the bar in the middle. I'm going to pull the end through a little bit and then I want to push this strap up a little bit to give me a nice loop there. So this is what it should look like right now. Then you're going to take the bag and you want to put the end of the strap through one of the rectangle rings. It really doesn't matter which side you start this on. I'm on the right side of the bag here. I'm just going to take the end of my strap. I'm going to put it up through that rectangle ring and I'm going from the bottom of the bag towards the top of the bag. So that's what it should look like right now. Then you're once again going to take the end of the strap and you want to put it up through the bottom of the slider again just like this with the bar to the right of the strap. So this is what it looks like now. You can see the end of the strap there and the bar is to the right of this strap right here. Then you're going to take the end of the strap and you're going to go back down through the slider over the bar. Just like that. And then you'll pull the end of that strap down about an inch or two. And for now you can put a couple of clips in there just to hold it in place. And the end of the strap here is going to be clipped to this strap right here. So the end of the strap is right in between these two sections. So let's put a clip in to hold it in place for now. Then you want to take the other end of the strap. Make sure that nothing is twisted. And you're going to go over to the other side of the bag. And we're going to put the end of the strap through this rectangle ring now. And again, you're going from, to go from the bottom of the bag up towards the top, just like this. And then you'll pull up about an inch or two and clip it, clip the end of the strap to the main strap there. Now to secure the end of the strap to the main strap, I'm simply going to sew one eighth of an inch away from the edge of the end of the strap. And I'll do that with a stitch length of 3.0 and I will go over the stitching about four times. And I am going to do that off camera. And here's the bag, all completed. Well, I do hope that you've enjoyed watching the video and I do hope that you'll give the pattern a try. Once again, you can find the link to the pattern in the description below the video. I want to thank everybody who has supported me by liking my videos and subscribing to my channel. And I would love to see you over at my Facebook page, which is Rosie and David Patterns. Thanks for watching and please like and subscribe.